The inland port is an interior land facility that is linked to the seaport by rail. An inland port can speed the flow of cargo between ships and major land transportation networks, creating a more centralized, less congested distribution point. So what we have is basically an inland port. We bring um, imports and execute exports to the ports by containerized freight. And not only do we do it in containerized freight, we do it in flat cars and we do it in um, covered hoppers and we do it in tank cars. So it's a multimodal transportation hub. Now when we talk about rail access and we talk about why is Decatur uniquely positioned, it becomes um, really obvious when we put the railroads onto the map. So you look at Decatur and then you add our friends, the Canadian National, the CN, and we're on the main line that goes down to New Orleans um, for grain and in Memphis for containers. And we can go to the west coast through Prince Rupert or Vancouver if we need to for containers or for bulk grains or tanks or whatever. Or we can go out through Montreal on the east coast. Um, our friends at the CSX, same thing. We got the eastern seaboard covered between New York and Norfolk and, and um, Charleston and Savannah. We can get to those ports um, and we ship out of all those locations from Decatur. Um, you add our friends at Norfolk Southern, they also cover those eastern seaboard. But the thing that al they allow us to do is they allow us to get all the way to Kansas City. And we can connect with the Burlington Northern, the BNSF, and we connect with them in St. Louis and in Kansas City to go to the West Coast. Why is the West Coast so important to us is LA Long Beach is the largest North American container port. In, um, in the, uh, obviously in North America, and it handles about 14 million containers on an annualized basis. The second largest is New York, and the third largest is Savannah. So if we're shipping container freight, we can go east coast or west coast, and we can arbitrage our freight back and forth, figuring out what's going on. Right now, LA Long Beach is very congested because of a potential strike um, on June 30th. We've been shipping some of our product to divert the um, congestion because there's a lot of skipped sailings. We've been shipping it via the East Coast and around and completing our supply chains. So the beautiful thing about this is if there's a port strike, if there's a natural disaster, if something happens, you can still get your product and complete your supply chain East Coast or West Coast. Now imagine for a minute our bean plant, which is on that side, it's not on the screen, I apologize, was held captive to one railroad, the Norfolk Southern. Imagine for a minute if you, and we, for years we wanted to go to the CN and we wanted to go to the CSX, but they have a thing called reciprocal switch. And they charge you five or six hundred dollars a car to switch it over to the railroad. Even though they're right there beside it, I'm going to charge you five hundred dollars to go from this rail line to this rail line because I need to get a revenue source. It's a paper barrier. That's what it is. They call them railroad paper barriers. And the, the really interesting thing about that is it's, it, it's frustrating because you can see the railroad tracks right beside you and you're like, come on. So when we created this, we now have the bean plant has capabilities to two other class one railroads directly. So our procurement on our raw material just increased by two thirds and our finished product sales just increased, our customer base increased by two thirds. We used to go up to Chicago, pick up the empty container, bring it back here, load it, take it back to Chicago loaded. Keep repeating that cycle, 85 times a day. Today, we put it on private infrastructure. We put it on the railroad. We put it in the Midwest Inland Port. We put it on the ramp. We put it in the railroad. And guess what? We take taking trucks off the road, which is taxpayers' infrastructure. And you all know as well as I do, potholes are not becoming less. They're becoming more. Today, if you're shipping scrap paper or bulk grains or something that's a base commodity, I can go from Chicago, Illinois, all the way to mainland China for about $1,150 all in in a container, 40 footer. $1,100. So my mind already thinks if I could ship my family a four over there, put a table and chairs in there, we could have a cheap vacation. I can't fly, I can't literally fly to California now for under 700 bucks. But you can take 58,000 pounds for, rough, for under $1,200. That's the power of the container. 